Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about some neighbor romances. Baby, baby. I love a good neighbor's romance y'all. I do. I just do. These are romance books where the couple in the book just so happen to live next door to one another. I think it's so cute. Some of these are some of my favorite books ever, so let's dive in. First, we have Passion on Park Avenue by Lauren Lane. Naomi has been wanting to be a part of Manhattan's upper class uh, for forever. That's what she's wanted ever since she was a little girl when she was born in the Bronx, and she's finally almost there. She now is a big CEO of a very popular and well-to-do jewelry company. However, Manhattan's upper class, specifically her neighbor Oliver, just keep excluding her and keep reminding her that she was not born into this life. Oliver Cunningham is the son to the family that her mother used to work for as a cleaning lady, and he used to torment Naomi when they were children. Now they live right next door to each other, and Oliver can't seem to remember Naomi and that they used to know each other as kids. This is a huge enemies to lovers romance. Naomi cannot stand Oliver. Oliver is very put off by Naomi but also does not know why she hates him so much. She, he does not know why. He also doesn't realize that that woman is the same uh, girl he used to torment as a kid in his apartment. This was really fun. It's not my favorite read of all time but I felt like the neighbors romance in here was really authentic and funny at points. Then I have All He Wants for Christmas by Katie Wilde. I know this is a Christmas book but it's also a pretty good neighbors romance you guys. This is about Cole and he is a detective and um, I believe the mayor if I'm not mistaken or a very rich man in his town um, has tasked him to just keep a lookout, keep an eye out for his daughter and the hero in here he is very smitten with his daughter but I believe she's quite younger than him um, and so she, he, he doesn't want to make her feel uncomfortable in any way even though he is very smitten with her and thinks that she's just an angel sent from above he's not going to do anything about it um little does he know that her dad ends up working some strings and has her when she moves out of her dad's house she moves into the same apartment building that cole lives in thinking that well the dad thinks that cole will look out for her and protect her and keep tabs on her to tell him about stuff. Little does he know that that gives the two of them a perfect opportunity to fall in love with one another by being in a forced proximity together. I thought this was so cute. If you haven't read a Katie Wilde book, please do. I really recommend this one or her, or her other Christmas book. I feel like they're just golden, cute, super sweet, but also very hot. <laughs> Ooh, here we have a favorite, y'all. We have Forever Right Now by Emma Scott. No one has read this book but me and more people need to read it you need to read this book. This is about Darlene and she's just coming out of, I believe, rehab. Um, she was in a very abusive relationship and she became a drug, act drug addict and she's finally out of that life. She never wants to go back to that life. So she decides to fulfill her lifelong dream of becoming a dancer in San Francisco. So she moves, moves to San Francisco in hopes of becoming a professional dancer. Since she's now moved to San Francisco, she has new neighbors. Below Darlene in the apartment complex below her lives Sawyer. Sawyer is studying to become a lawyer and he is also a single father to a beautiful little baby girl. Sawyer and Darlene are very instantly attracted to one another. However, they decide to distance themselves from one another because Sawyer, Sawyer, he um he doesn't want Olivia to get attached to somebody where it could eventually fall apart. Um, he's very protective of his little girl. And Darlene is very hesitant to be in a relationship with Sawyer because of her past, because she does not want to be judged for her past. But then they start to get to know one another and Darlene may or may not babysit for a couple of times and they start falling in love with one another and finally telling each other how they feel. And oh my gosh, this book is so good. It's very heavy, very emotional at points, so please beware. But no one has read this book and more people need to read it because it is honestly just beautiful. Next, I have The Air He Breathes by Brittany C. Cherry. This is about our hero who has recently faced a horrible tragedy. He has recently lost his, I believe his son and his wife. In a tragic accident. Then our heroine in here, she has also experienced loss. Her husband recently died and she is now a single mother. Ever since her husband died she's been living with her mom 
coping with what she's going through and she and her daughter or i believe it's her daughter uh decide to go back to their house after being away for a little bit and she realizes once she get there she has a new neighbor who is the hero here and the way that they meet is very unfortunate um she accidentally hits his dog with her car and um she ends up driving him with the dog to the vet it's a whole thing and he's a super super upset obviously and she's trying to remedy the situation and like pay him back in any way that she can and she's telling him that the dog will be fine it's okay we're good i'm so sorry about this and he's just like mean and grumpy he's basically the town grump he's the town grump and basically he he just doesn't like her from that point on does not like her but then they start to get to know one another and they use one another in a sense to deal with their grief of losing the person that they love they get together and think that the other person is their spouse that died um it's very unhealthy and they decide to once they decide to cut things off they start to actually realize and learn about who this actual other person is and they actually start to fall in love with one another sorry that was a lot of actuallys <laughs> This book is honestly beautiful. Um, I love Bernie C. Cherry so much. I feel like she just writes beautifully, beautifully, amazingly well. Ooh, then we have probably my favorite, my favorite, favorite neighbor's romance of all time. You have Heidi's Guide to Four Little Words by Tara Civic and Andy Arndt. Y'all, this book, so good. If you didn't watch my funny romances video, this book was on there. This book made me cackle more than any book I've ever read. Listen to the audiobook if you haven't yet. The audiobook is 10 out of 10. Amazing, wonderful, beautifully done. So this is about Heidi and she just got fired from being a kindergarten teacher. And the only job that she comes across is a job at an audiobook company. And her first day on the job, she doesn't realize that this company only uh, does audiobooks for steamy books. <laughs> and she's kind of, she categorizes herself a little bit as a prude, a little bit shy, a little bit skittish about stuff like that. And so one night uh, she gets pretty drunk off some boxed wine and uh, she gets some old podcasting equipment out and decides to read scenes from a, a naughty book on a podcast and posts it drunkenly in hopes of getting more comfortable around the space that she's been put in for work and to hopefully get enough confidence to ask out her next door neighbor she has a huge crush on huge crush on and she talked about him a lot on this podcast and oh my gosh he is so cute though like he'll do yard work in front of his house and she'll just stand there and see him shirtless and just be like drooling <laughs> but he's so cute and sweet about it and oh my gosh i love this one if you want a book to make, to make you laugh, this is it. Then I have Neighborly by Christina Jackson. So Heaven and her boyfriend Calvin end up moving to a new, I think like a duplex. And there she meets their next door neighbors. And their names are Tasha and Steven. Tasha and Steven have been married for quite a long time, but they also kind of have a little bit of an open relationship. And so the moment that Tasha and Heaven see one another, they cannot stop thinking about one another. Like, these two women are thoroughly infatuated with one another. And so their respective partners are all for it. They're like, go for it, do your thing, get with her, do what you want. Whew. Good, 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 good. <laughs> then I have Beach Read by Emily Henry. Um, this one is about January and Augustus. Uh, January and Augustus are next door neighbors during a summer. Um, January's father just died and she ends up going to the beach house that he owns. There she meets Augustus who is having a huge party one night in his beach house and she is very annoyed by it and is trying to tell him, hey, turn it down. And he's just like, whatever. They're both novelists. I believe she writes romance books and he kind of writes like murder mystery, more deep thought books. He's currently working on like a cult novel or something like that. And so both of them are kind of a little bit in a writer's rut. And so they task the other person or challenge the other person to write in their genre instead. Or like she tasks him to write a happy ending to his story and he tasks her to do something else, but I can't remember. They basically go on these researching trips with one another to research about their books and they start to fall for one another. <laughs> um, I feel like this is a big staple in the romance community. Um, so if you haven't read this yet, Please do. Next, I have A Bitter Rival by Jay Sterling. This is also kind of a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet situation. Think of it more as like a rivaling family's ro romance. So this is about Julia and James, and they are the children to rivaling winery families. Um, these two families are live right next door to one another, and they both own 
vineyards. They've been told their entire life to not talk to the other um, because they're rivaling families. Obviously, they cannot talk to one another, um, but they are now older. They both don't like one another, but once they get to know one another, they can't help but fall in love despite their parents' wishes. I love this. It's one of my favorite rivaling families romances. I thought this was really hot, really fun. A great twist on the Romeo and Juliet enemies to lovers situation here. Then I have The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. This is a historical romance, if you couldn't tell. This is the third book in the Girl Meets Duke series. This is about Lady Penelope and she lives in this house filled with a bunch of animals that she has rescued. So many different kinds of animals. There's an otter, um, there's a bunch of cats. I want to say there's a ferret. I don't remember though, but there's like so many different kinds of animals living in this house. She basically rescues them because no one else will and she provides them a home. Gabriel is an up and coming man and he wants to renovate the house next to Penelope's. However, uh, he realizes that she owns all these pets and no one is going to want to live next to a house and like buy a house that um, uh, is filled with pets that are smelly, stinky and loud. Um, <laughs> so he basically tells Penelope or Penny like I need you to get rid of all these animals and she's like fine I will but you have to help me find homes for them and so this is like the journey of them finding homes for all these animals and then they fall in love with the midst of it and it is so cute he's very broody and standoffish and she's just this sweet sunshiny heroine this is very grumpy sunshine and oh my gosh this book is so cute it is cute read it. <laughs> and lastly, I have The Year We Fell Down by Serena Bowen. This is actually a college romance. This romance is between Corey and Adam. Corey um, suffered from a spinal cord injury and so she is wheelchair bound um, and she is I believe a freshman at this university that Adam goes to as well. Adam ha is her uh, dorm neighbor. He lives on the same floor as her so they're neighbors in a dorm. They of course get to know one another being dorm neighbors and they start to uh realize that they have feelings for one another even though Corey doesn't believe that she deserves love because of what she's been through and she doesn't believe that anyone could love her because she's in a wheelchair and adam tries to tell her like you are a human being and your wheelchair does not define you and Corey has to go through a whole self-reflection journey of her realizing that and I thought that this was done really well. Um, there is slight cheating in here which was not my favorite so please be aware of that but I feel like everything else trumps that in my eyes. So there you have it. Those are some romance books that have the neighbors trope in them. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all! Thank you.